Hey guys, what's going on? I just wanted to make this quick video about Sekiro, especially with the Man Without Equal trophy, because this is one of the harder trophies in the game, and for me, it took several playthroughs to actually get this, and the only reason why is because there's kind of a hidden mechanic that the game doesn't really tell you about, and I wasn't able to find a lot of information about it online, so I kind of wanted to just help people out and let them understand exactly how to get this trophy. So the Man Without Equal trophy says that you have to beat every single boss in the game. And while this sounds pretty simple on the surface, there's a lot of confusion behind it. So the first thing is this does not include mini bosses. This trophy does not include any mini boss in the game at all. So you can technically go through the entire game and skip out on all those mini bosses if you wanted to. The only bosses that actually count are the bosses that you're able to get memories from or remnants from. So this trophy requires two full playthroughs and you have to do two of the endings. You have to do the Immortal Severance ending and you have to do the Shura ending. So here's kind of what you have to do. On the first playthrough, you want to go through and beat the game as you normally would. So you're going to fight Kyobu, Genichiro, and all that. Make sure that you go into um, the Harada Estate and you beat Lady Butterfly. And you're going to go all the way down to here, and then you're going to beat your dad, the Great Shinobi. Now, there's a secret boss in the Immortal Severance ending that you can only get in the Immortal Severance ending and the other two endings that are not the Shura ending and that is Foster Father which is basically your dad at his peak. In order to get this there is a kind of secret workaround that you have to do where you get an additional memory to go into the Harada estate and then you fight him but keep in mind you can only do this during the Immortal Severance ending. If you do it during the Shura ending, you're gonna miss the opportunity to go back there and fight him. So you have to make sure that you fight him as well. Then of course you go through the rest of the game, you fight the Divine Dragon, and also you have to kill the Demon of Hatred. So that is a boss that is also only available in the Immortal Severance ending. Once you have killed all those bosses and then you kill Saint Ishin, that will complete the Immortal Severance ending. Now it is very, very important. This part is what tripped me up so many times and it's apparently what's tripping up a lot of other people as well. The game will not register that you have done one solid playthrough of both endings if you save your game after you beat Saint Ishin. So you can save and quit the game at any point that you want up until you beat Saint Ishin. After you beat him, you must play through the remainder of the entire Shura ending in one playthrough. You cannot quit your game at all. Now, when you go through the Shura ending, assuming that you've beaten all of these other bosses, you do not have to go through and kill them all again. You're obviously going to have to to be able to progress the story, but you don't have to make sure that you're going back and killing people like Lady Butterfly, for instance, and obviously you're not going to be able to get to your foster father, and you're not going to be able to get to the Demon of Hatred. But you're going to go through and you're going to get all the bosses that you normally would, and then when you get to the Shura ending, you're going to fight Ishin and you're going to fight Emma. So the way that you do that is when you get... To the top of Ashina Castle where you confront your dad, you're going to want to select the option that says Forsake the Divine Heir. So you're going to Forsake Kuro, and that's going to prompt you to fight Emma and Ishin. Once you have done that, assuming that you have beaten every other boss and that you did not save your game after you beat Saint Ishin, then the trophy will pop. So anyways guys, that's pretty much it. I just kind of wanted to shed some light on that because like I said, I cannot find a single thing online that really kind of went into depth about that. But anyways guys, happy hunting, stay good, and I'll see you next time.